All right, so we've got uh, our project that we were working on last time to uh, put it, uh, to get it out of, um, you know, part one of the class and bring it into part two of the class, meaning uh, we want to continue to work on our CVDV project in Visual Studio. So uh, I've got my content, uh, I've created an account, I'm going to log in. So I've got my project. And the way we left uh, after the assessment, we should have the home screen, save comic, view comic. Remember, that's uh, you know work in progress at the moment. So uh, I've got some of the graphics and some of the text, and then the um, you know option screen and such. So that's where we're at here. Now we're going to go into creating save comic and view comic. Uh, that part of the project is is upon us where we're going to start to be able to save and view actual content. That means we're going to start to introduce these concepts of the database and saving data. Before that, uh, I want to do a little bit of styling to the project. We've been looking at it as this plain black and white or black and gray color throughout the whole course up to this point. And we started to personalize it a bit by adding some of these unique graphics and your own text that was part of the assessment. So the, um, the styling of it uh, is going to come through CSS. So we're going to start to cover some things about CSS. So the goals of today, first of all, are to start to style the project with our own colors. Uh, and I also want to style the project uh, based on our own preference for fonts and things. And instead of it looking really boring at this point, I want uh, you to uh, start to style it how you would like. So the way we'll do this first is uh, we want to change the basic styling of our uh, project, which is going to be CSS. And the problem with uh, trying to style our project is even though the Visual Studio template comes with an index CSS file, the index CSS file doesn't have very much in it. Remember here, we left it with about 25 lines of code, some basic things about fonts and colors and such. Well, all of this styling about how our project works, drop shadows and borders and all of that, all of this styling built into it is coming from what? What is this designer, this interface? jQuery Mobile jQuery Mobile is what's giving us this basic design of hovers, hover colors, and drop shadows, and all of that. So our index CSS is to customize what's already there, because our index.css has some very basic definition. So jQuery Mobile.css is the file that has all of the underlying design of our jQuery Mobile project. If you take a peek inside of jQuery Mobile.css, oh, it's only three lines of code. Cool. Uh, no, actually, if you scroll over, it's thousands of lines of code, all in one long line. So all of the styling of what jQuery Mobile looks like is in this file. But this file is the minified version. It's compressed. So it's all just one huge line. I guess we have word wrap in here somewhere to turn on, but even that is going to be just lots and lots of lines. And somewhere here you're going to find, change the color of my font. Well, this often, ha this often happens with a framework or a template in terms of out of the box, it's designed well, it's full featured, etc. But then to make changes, you either have to dig through the template code or use a tool that they provide you to do so. And jQuery Mobile does that. They have a tool actually that it's super easy, drag and drop, I want this color here, I want that color there, and it'll just give me the code which then I apply to my project. So we're not going to be editing anything in the jQuery Mobile CSS file. Uh, we're going to do it via the jQuery Mobile theme roller. Let's go ahead and open up your web browser. Let's go to jQueryMobile.com. jQueryMobile.com. Let's go 
for the jQueryMobile.com. When you scroll down, there will be a little section called Theming, built to be branded. So Theme Roller is basically their official way in a nice WYSIWYG interface. What you see is what you get, WYSIWYG. In a nice WYSIWYG interface to be able to easily then style our project. And then we can apply the code instead of having to write these arcane commands ourselves. So you can click on the Theme Roller button. It seems that if you use Internet Explorer, the site doesn't work as well. And uh, nowadays, you really shouldn't be using Internet Explorer. So uh, you should probably visit Theme Roller here in either a Firefox or um, Chrome. Uh, Safari is not advisable anymore either. If you didn't know, Safari is abandoned on Windows. It's actually a security vulnerability. So you shouldn't even have Safari on Windows. On the Mac, you're fine. Don't even get Safari on Windows. And Internet Explorer, you shouldn't use that either. It's old. So nowadays, you use Edge, or Chrome, or Firefox, or Opera. But anyway, here, welcome to Theme Roller. Create up to 26 theme swatches lettered from theme A to Z with a unique color theme. OK, get rolling. Now that's saying something here. We can have 26 different styles to our website, A, B, C, and such. Before we make any changes here, look at this here. Uh, you don't have to do this, but in the index file, I think we covered it briefly a, a while ago. But in the index file, I have the ability to add a data theme attribute. You don't have to do this just yet. But we have the ability to add different themes. Let me log out so you can see it. I added this to the home screen. Look at this, I activated the dark theme in uh, my project. So built in, jQuery Mobile has a data theme attribute. We, didn't we haven't used it throughout our project yet. We're going to use it in a moment. But the default is jQuery Mobile has data theme A as the default, which is that our screens get the basic gray style. There's another one called Data Theme B. It does the dark theme. You saw there that instead of everything being you know, gray and light gray and dark gray, we have various tones of black and dark gray. Well, yeah, that looks cool, but those are not the colors of my company. Those are not the colors that I wish to have for my project. So you have all the way up to Data Theme Z, or Z, as 26 different styles that you can have for your project. And only A and B are defined, gray or black. And anything besides that, we will create via the theme roller. So you see here, data theme A, B, C, D, whatever. So what we'll need to do here is make our design. It'll give us some CSS code that we'll apply it to our project. So this is going to be drag and drop. You see a basic interface where then you can just drag a color from the top and say, I want to have my title bars, my headers be red. I want the main background color over here purple. And then the text area is blue. And then links yellow. Behind the scenes, this is creating CSS. And after we play with this for a little bit, then we'll talk about adding this to our project. But here's your task for the moment. Play with this for a bit. Create three different color combinations, A, B, C. If you want to create D, uh, J, whatever, you can. But for the moment, at least, let's create a design for A, B, and C. Play with these various other elements to the side, because there are some things you can style through these boxes, not just dropping a color. You see that we've got an undo, we've got a redo. And 
And uh, so just take a moment to do that. Uh, pick a couple of color combinations for A, B, and C. Uh, you may not uh, have a good sense of color. That's OK. Maybe you don't know what clashes or what doesn't or what's harmonious, what's the color wheel, etc. Don't worry. Just put something together, a few different colors, and then we'll talk about integrating it into our project. Now be careful here, you're doing a lot of hard work. If you happen to accidentally refresh your screen, you're going to lose it all. So of course we're going to uh, download it in a moment. But what you can also note here is as we're working on your project, uh, take a quick look here. We'll, we'll do download in a moment. But we have share. If you click that share button on the top right, it generates a link that is unique to your color scheme. If you wanted my color scheme, you go to that particular address, and it's my colors. Now, the only bad part, unfortunately, and it's a big thing, we can only store your colors for 30 days. So past 30 days, if you follow that link again, your colors are no longer there. So you can make a note of that share link, but it'll only last for the uh, from now until 30 days. Does that apply to the once we add it into Visual Studio, no, their colors will be there always in Visual Studio, but your colors will not be saved on themeroller.com past 30 days. Now you have all of these swatches here, and it looks like a lot of colors, but it's not that many. Actually, it is a lot of colors because you can play with saturation. If you drag that slider to the right, the colors get uh, darker. If you drag them to the left, they get weaker. Uh, you can do lightness, which adds white or adds black to a color. So you do have you know, probably the full range of 16-bit colors, which is like, I don't know, 2 million colors or something. So um, try to put together some sort of design of colors, maybe like a, a basic conservative one and then a more wild one if you'd like. So put together A, B, C, and then we'll talk about how to add it to our project. It's not very obvious here, but let's say you already have a color formula you want to use. 
up here under recent colors is a button that says colors you can put in the color formula here or use the color wheel so if you know that you've got a certain color I don't know like FF2233 um, that exact color then you can uh, put your formula there and it'll load it up or you can drag this around and create the perfect color So let's say I've got some, I've got these three colors that I want to work with. I want to add this to my project. So uh, this is going to require that we download the CSS code. This is all made out of CSS, and we can then further edit it if we want. But the CSS code we need to incorporate into our project. So let's say I'm done with my uh, styling here. If you click on the download button on the top, it gives us a few hints about how to add this into our project. Basically, the file we're going to download is going to be something of my custom.css. So this is going to give us a CSS file. We then need to incorporate, we need to add a style sheet link in the HTML document. We need to link to that CSS file that they're going to give us. Then it'll be added as part of our project. So this is saying this will generate a zip that contains both a compressed and uncompressed version. So this is going to give us a, a .css file and a .min.css file. The .min is the minified version, the compressed version, the one ready for production, the one that's more efficient and runs in memory faster. But the problem with that is just like when I, when I showed you here, the jQuery mobile CSS file, it's compressed and it's unreadable for, for you if you want to make changes. The other file that it gives us is the uncompressed version that is human readable and editable. So to actually use it, um, to add it to our app, we want the compressed version. But if we want to further edit the code, we need the editable version. We can re-import. Let's say I was to come back later some other day, within the 30 days, and I wanted to continue to edit my theme from another day. I have the ability to import. And it says copy and paste the contest, contents of any uncompressed jQuery mobile theme file to load it for editing. So in a moment when we download this, it'll give us the compressed version and the uncompressed. To continue to work on it in the future, we have to upload the uncompressed version. We'll practice that later. But for the moment, under this download screen, the name that it's asking for here, that's going to be the name of your CSS file. So if I call this my style, it'll download a my style dot CSS file or maybe I can call it themes and it'll give me themes.css whatever makes sense to you my colors whatever you want to type on the top right there I'm gonna type my style one word no spaces no capital letters and then click download zip Depending on your web browser, it will either ask you, what would you like to do with the file, open it or save it? You want to save it. If it doesn't ask you, most likely it just simply download it to the desktop. And when I go look at my downloaded file in the desktop, it downloaded, in my case, a file, a zip file, called jQuery Mobile theme 1828, whatever. Everyone's is going to be a little bit different. But that zip file then, you need to copy that to your flash drive to keep a copy of that zip file in case you want to work with making changes later. So I'm going to take a moment to copy this to my flash drive, the whole zip file. But then in the zip file, if you open the zip file, you'll see an index file and a theme folder. If you open the theme folder, So inside the zip file, inside the theme folder, we will see, or we should see, mystyle.css, mystyle.min.css. Uh, these are things about 
theme, my themes. So whatever you called yours on the screen here, when you were about to download it, whatever you called it there, inside of your zip file, you'll see it. MyStyle.css, MyStyle.min.css. You need to copy or move the MyStyleCSS file into Visual Studio, into your project folder, in, in the um, CSS folder. Actually, not in the CSS folder. Uh, the best thing is just move it over to the www folder. <coughs> so the mystyle.min.css, move it over to the www root folder of your project in Visual Studio. You might have to uh, unzip or uncompress that zip file, but. Um, Copy that over to the root level. You should be able to drag it after you unzip it. You should be able to drag my style.min.css, just drag it into the root, the www folder, and eventually it will show up right there, my style.min.css. Okay, so the general, the big idea of it all is that we're designing our project, or our style that is, in Theme Roller. We have to download the file and put it into our Visual Studio project. Then we need to link our index file to your custom CSS file. So in Visual Studio, let's open index.html. Question? Yeah, is it just the one CSS or the minified also? The minified is the one we want, not the non-minified. We, we want just the minified one. We will not use both. We only need the one minified file. The unminified one is useful to copy and paste back into Theme Roller to make more changes. But that's not the one we want for our project because it's not compressed and efficient. OK, so here in Visual Studio, to link the two, let's open up the index.html file. And up on the head block. So we've got already a link to jQuery Mobile, the basic jQuery Mobile style, that boring gray style. We've got then a link to a CSS file that Visual Studio gave us, where we're going to write all of our custom code. So at approximately line 15, we're going to add a new link. So the logic of this is, let's first link to and load the basic gray jQuery mobile style. Then we will link to, we will load the one we just downloaded. Then it will link to the custom one where I can further customize it, change colors, fonts, etc. Yes? It's going to be on the roots level. Even though we've got a CSS folder, I know there's going to be trouble because just like we've got the jQuery mobile CSS outside, jQuery Mobile is going to look for an images folder. If we had put jQuery Mobile CSS in the CSS folder, it wouldn't find the images folder. So mystyle.min is sort of the same thing. It's going, to find, it's going to want to find the images folder, including the basic jQuery Mobile icons. The basic jQuery Mobile icons are in images. 
the only one we need is the mystyle.min, exactly, .css. So in our code here, we're going to write a link tag, just like the, the one above it. So we'll start the link tag rel. What's the relationship between the current file and the file we're linking to? It's a style sheet, space href. Now this is really cool here with Visual Studio. If you do use the tooltip that appears, if you press tab, it then pops up with a little menu right here where you can just use the arrow keys or the mouse to select a file without having to type it and mistype it. You press tab and it'll type it for you. This is even better when things are in subfolders because then it'll write the whole path for you. you tab that and then finish the line. I'm going to write some notes here. First load the basic jQuery mobile themes gray, black, then just, just one moment, let me finish my thought here, then load uh, our custom colors from uh, jQuery mobile theme roller, I'll just say theme roller, and then finally, um, set up our further custom CSS code. So three different CSS files being loaded for three different purposes. Question? Um, my computer is, uh, is one day in advance. Is that normal? The date of it is one day ahead? Yes, it's July 18, 2018. That's it's interesting. Exactly what I just created. Um, it'll probably be OK if the dates are off. I, I wouldn't. But maybe that's why it's not letting me copy. Not letting you copy? Copy the, the micro style file that you just created. That, uh, it's, it might not let you copy it because you need to uncompress it first. You can right click that folder and then select extract. That would not compress it. Okay. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. So these three lines, it does matter the order for these things. Because the logic of it is, first we load up the most basic aspect of it, the black and the gray. Then we load up the um, colors that we chose. Then we have one more CSS file in case we want to do tweaks. So think about it that if we loaded up first, our cool colors, and then we loaded up the gray color, it would override it. It would go in the order that it's found in the code. That's part of what CSS stands for, cascading style sheets. The cascade, like a waterfall, goes from top to bottom. So our code, 
like our JavaScript, CSS, HTML, it starts to read it from top to bottom, it cascades. So here we're saying load up the basic design, then load up our cool design, then load up the ability to add more tweaks. Out of order, it would give you different results. That's all we basically need to do here. We needed to design our uh, colors, download our colors, add them into Visual Studio, and add the code, run it. See if you get then these colors being applied to your design. I see it right away here. So get some new colors. Yes. Can you say that again? These images here were part of the assessment. Yes, remember it was asked that on the uh, welcome screen. No. The one from my from my uh, uh, folder has the code correct, but not the extra stuff from the assessment. But when I put my code a little bit later today, it'll have this latest version. Yes. Yes. On what what line? On the line okay. Yes. Um, this is being very verbose. This is being very, very obvious. Saying the link that we're uh, the link here with what we're connecting connecting to the exact type of file we're connecting to is a text file specifically for CSS. That is like the most correct way to do it. But nowadays it's a bit passe because if we are running a project that is HTML5, the latest version of the code, we don't have to be that explicit. In the old days, we would have to say, yes, if we're going to link to something, we also have to say what type of file we're linking to. But because we're running HTML5, it assumes a link will be a style sheet file, so it doesn't need that. Similar, if you noticed back on the script tag at the very end of the document, down here, same sort of thing. The old verbose style is if we're going to link to a script file, we need to specify its text JavaScript. Uh, when we set up our own jQuery and jQuery Mobile, we did it. So both are valid to have it or not, but because we're running HTML5, it's one less thing to do because it'll assume our script is connected to a JavaScript file, so we don't have to specify it. So either we can leave it as is, or if we're OCD like me, we can make it be exactly the same, and the way I would do it is remove them, but I'll leave that up to you if you'd like to change it. Yes. If you want to keep the original uh, A and B theme, uh -huh. so you would have to download an unmodified version and go ahead and edit the CSS code. If you want to keep the default color, do not change theme A. The default of what we get in jQuery Mobile is, is theme A. So when you make changes here, make your colors on B and C and D and whatever. And therefore you'll get the default colors. I guess what I mean is when I like a Z, mm. If you want to create a Z, uh, you would have to add swatches to get up to the end there. You could edit the non-minified version, but it's just going to be a lot easier to make changes here. Uh, question? So is there a way to select? Yes, we're going to do that right now. So, in my case, I made a yellow theme, a blue theme, a red theme. And uh, by default, what appeared was the um, theme A. So, to change the themes, wherever you'd like the new color, B, C, D, whatever, you go to the appropriate section and you add a data role of the other of the other theme. So let's say I want to leave my data theme A colors in PG welcome. So I don't have to do anything. It always assumes data theme A. Let's say on the uh, PG um, PG home PG home that's where I want theme B. So we add a new attribute line 102 we have got data role and ID, and as I said, I like to keep ID as the very last attribute because you often have to refer to it, so you'll see it very quickly at the end of the code there. So we'll add it before, data-theme 
equals quotes. And you say B or C or J or whatever um, swatches you created. Now this does require that you add that data theme to every screen, every section that you want to change. Uh, by default, if you had edited theme A, it will apply to everything because theme A is the default. If you wanted anything else different, B, C, D, you have to specify this screen needs to be data theme B. And so if I change that, and simply that, add a new attribute to whatever section you want, and then it's data-theme B. And when you run that, um, the home, PG, PG home, so there's PG welcome, it's yellow, it's theme A, you see here. I'm going to log in. I went to PG, Wel uh, PG, uh, PG Home, PG Welcome before PG Home Now, data theme B, because I specified it here. I didn't specify it over here, and I didn't specify it over here. So those go back to default of A, yellow. So the point of that is this is either good or bad in terms of I want everything to change in a uniform way, change your theme A. If you want completely different colors for completely different screens, the, the bad of it is you just you need to go in and manually put data theme B and C and D and change it for each individual thing. Yeah. That is a little bit out of the scope of this class because it is a design, it is a question for like more of a graphic design class. Mm -hmm. Uh, but, you know, we could do something like uh, basic principles of graphic design. Basic principles of UI design. So, um, things like clarity, keep user in control. So, yeah, there's plenty of uh, advice out there about uh, what's the best thing to do. But the basic thing is don't don't make it too complex. Think about the apps you use on a regular basis, and usually they're very straightforward. One or two taps to get to the information that you need, not seven different fonts, not 12 different colors, not four animations. They're very consistent. So one of the big things about it is consistency and readability. Like if I were to choose you know, some really cool colors, a lot of black and green or whatever, and they would clash, and then it's hard to read. So. Actually, I can mention a couple of books here that might be useful. There's a book called Don't Make Me Think. Don't Make Me Think. This is, there's the original classic one, and then there's the revised, revisited one. I would just go for the revisited one. The classic one's over 10 years old, but this is still timeless concepts. And I would go over to the new one here. So don't make me think. Revisit it. A common sense approach to web usability. Now, focusing on the web, but our project is web-related, so they would still work. This is a great book to look at about these concepts, about what makes good uh, accessibility, usability, interfaces, and such. And the same author also has another one very related to that called, I'll put these in the notes, uh, but there's another one called um, Rocket Science. I think that's what it's called. Uh, what is it called? Um, no, rocket surgery. Uh, yeah, there it is. Rocket surgery made easy. So, finding and fixing usability problems. So, I'll put uh, the links to both of these books about design uh, into the notes in the network folder in case you're interested in looking at them.
Okay, so uh, in the MAD2 folder, if anyone would want that, I put a, a text file called Book Recs, Book Recommendations. Those two books that I just mentioned are in there in case you'd like to check out those books at some point. Okay, so my project loaded up and I've got the different colors and that's the idea in terms of uh, the, the, um, the basic design, the basic style of our project. Now there is something, another little thing to, to look at here as a tweak. You may notice this uh, on uh, pop-ups when you open the options pop-up for for example uh, depending on your colors it may be more obvious it's not quite obvious on mine but let's say here I wanted to change this color here in the pop-up box this is the part where the theme roller is very good, but it does not display every possible element that you could create with jQuery Mobile. Let's have a little discussion here then of using the developer tools to try to make changes. So the way we'll do this is if you um, however your project is, let's run it in the simulator just so that we're all looking at the same thing. Run it in the LG5 simulator so I can show you what I want to show you here. Load it up in the simulator and then maximize your, your screen and then press F12. That'll bring up the developer's console. We've looked at this console before. But we want to look at the Elements tab this time. The Elements tab shows you all of the code of HTML and CSS and JavaScript that your project is made out of. And as you hover over the code on the right side, things on the left side may highlight. Because everything's made out of code, of course. There's also a little icon select an element in the page to inspect it you see up on the top bar here we were, we've been looking at this device toolbar before but next to it is the selector if you click on that and then hover over the design you're going to see various things highlighting I haven't clicked on anything I'm just hovering and I'm hovering over this and it says that's an H2 and it has a few dimensions when I hover it over there, it also hovers over on my on my code panel over here. Now this, I'm surprised this doesn't have line numbers. But anyway, as I hover over these different things on the side here, it pops up on the side there. Question? So if that's possible, why could we not copy the codes and enter them into the command HTML? Well, copy, copy which code? The code that we were just reading right there, every time you hover over it, isn't that a code that tells you what color that is? Yes, and uh, that's that's what I'm getting at, yes. Yeah. So you can hover over these things over here, and then we'll see that particular code there, these particular values here. We can then make changes and copy them over in Visual Studio. We'll do that in a moment. Here we're just kind of breaking it down of what we're looking at because this tool is so useful. Google Chrome has it, Firefox has it, Safari, Edge, Opera, they all have it in that you can hover over and then better yet if you click after you've turned on your pointer and then you hover and click you get all of this valuable information which if you're not used to looking at this panel is kind of overwhelming because on the right side I see what I clicked on there was an H2 where I wrote number one comic app and I see a bar right here 
we read it from right to left. We read that what I clicked on was an H2. And notice if you hover that over that, it also highlights. <coughs> that H2 is inside of an article. If I click that, notice it also jumped back one level here. That H2 was inside of an article, which is this, which is all of the main visible area. It's not selecting the header. It's not selecting the footer. Makes sense, because that's in the article in between the two. That is inside of PG Home ID. If I click on that, it jumps back one more level to select the section, which is the whole thing that I'm looking at. And then back there, it goes back to body. Click on body. Well, that's most of the whole document. Everything's inside of body. And then one more level back on that to the left is the whole HTML project. HTML dot UI dash mobile. What does the dot mean regarding CSS? Remember, we work with IDs and classes. The dot is a class. So UI dash mobile is a jQuery mobile class that is found inside of the jQuery mobile CSS file. So when uh, the UI mobile class is being attached to the HTML body, the HTML and the body and everything of my document and giving it some basic styling. Okay, well, this is interesting information that it's giving me, but the most useful aspect is you have then the ability to edit a variety of CSS things. If I say, well, what's this color back here? If I try to select the background and I kind of scroll around here, I might see some examples of where the color is being applied. Some of them are crossed out because of the cascade of CSS. And this one actually is kind of backwards. I said the cascade from top to bottom. Most of these uh, developer tools will show it backwards, the most specific element here to the more general element. Here again is, is general to specific. There's HTML enveloping everything in general. Then there's body in general. Then specifically, home, even more specific article, even more specific h2. That's the most specific element on the page. On this vertical panel, it's the same sort of thing. The first thing we look at is the most specific element, the one thing you clicked on. Um, then going further up, it says it got inherited from this, but it got crossed out because something deeper in the code overrode it. Then that comes from using a section which had these basic colors, which were overridden, and so forth. So maybe I'm trying to change the color of. various elements <clears throat> that I change the color of the of the eyeball there well what I'm doing um, is when you select an element with that selector the code should appear of what what it is here so I clicked on that color and I changed the color of that font that wasn't something or that icon that wasn't something that I saw inside of theme roller. <clears throat> well, all of this that we're doing here is, is temporary. It's a playground. If you refresh it, you lose it. This code here, then, I need to copy and paste it into Visual Studio, because what I'm making changes here in this developer's tool is temporary. But what's useful about this is it's a playground. I can make changes. I can say, well, what if I make the font bigger? What will it look like? What if I change the color? What will it look like? Before committing to a change, I uh, can make uh, I can play around with it here. But then I have to apply it in my CSS file. This is saying that in my style dot min dot CSS line 147, there's this CSS code that is controlling the background color of those of those icons this is the part where then 
you can select that code and copy that and then I would paste it into my the CSS file of index.css at the very end should be safe so this color that I was playing with in in Chrome you know looking at it in a very visual way about being obvious of what I'm selecting yeah I can select that code and copy it and paste it the place to paste it is into your custom CSS file that index.css file in this in the CSS folder that's what I copied a moment ago here. That particular shade of red was the one that I copied out of Chrome. Because any of these changes that I make here in the, in the browser uh, are not permanent until I actually make them in Visual Studio. See, now those got changed permanently. Some of this code is more complex. Notice that line is pretty complex. Well, I got it out of, I wouldn't have you type that. I copied and pasted that out of Chrome after inspecting. What's that particular element I'm trying to edit? And sometimes it is, it is like a, a treasure hunt. Sometimes it's obvious, sometimes it's not. Honest, uh, unfortunately, honestly, oftentimes it's not. Especially when you're, you're working with a, with a theme or a framework that's already created, you often have to select your selector right here and click on an item and look at the code and maybe, maybe where I need to make that change is not here. Maybe it's not the H1. Maybe it's the next level up. Maybe it's the header. So I click on header. I look at my code here. I found the right spot. For example, for some of you, you needed to, your text at the top was getting cropped. Well, that's because the default is that 30% of that header is empty space. I would need to change it to have more space up there. I'll come back to that in one moment. The point is that with these inspectors, you can break down what was created, play around with making changes, find the right change, copy and paste it, or retype it in Visual Studio where then it becomes permanent. So if you, a few of you have had asked me, uh, I'm on a screen and my text on the top gets cropped by looking at the inspector here. You see, these highlights are not just any random shapes. When I highlighted the H1 up there, that's the amount of space I have to type my text. Anything beyond that gets cropped. It shows right here that when any text overflows, replace it with ellipses, the dot, dot, dot. Well, that box right there is pretty small. Margin 030. Is it larger or smaller? Let me just confirm that. OK, it's smaller. So the default is 30. And therefore, it's going to crop. It's going to crop too much. If you make that number smaller, like 10, this shows now that much text can fit at the top. Well, this is just temporary. To make it permanent, I would copy that code from Chrome and change the relevant part. Technically, I don't need to copy everything about it. Technically, I just need this margin. But it's OK to copy it. It's going to be redundant, but it's OK. But all of that that I discovered here after using this selector, I discovered, OK, well, it's cropping the top of my text. Why is that? Let me select it. Oh, I see there's a value of a margin that's way too big. So when I copy that, and then I go back to my Visual Studio, and then paste the code at the end is, is probably fine. Then I have a copy of the code, which will override the defaults. 
And what I'm trying to overwrite here is that it's no longer 30% empty space. It's only 10% empty space. Looking at this makes sense. It's saying in the header, you're going to have a title. And the margin was 30, 30% empty space. Well, I changed it. Whenever there's a title in the header, I've changed it to say 10%, only 10% empty space. I don't want to put it to zero because then your text is going to go all the way to the edge. That'll look weird. 10% seems to be a good value. Because of this comma, it's also saying apply the following to the footer, any title in the footer as well. You may or may not want that. <clears throat> And in my in my example here, my text is not that not that big, so it doesn't um, it doesn't overflow. But for some of you that did have that issue that your text was getting cropped, that's the answer there. I'm just going to simplify it. And I can note fixing the uh, the cropping of my text in a header. So that one line there. Now there is a space here if you're typing it manually. There is a space between UI.header space UI.title. There has to be a space there. If there's no space there, it's not going to behave how you expect. Question in the back? We've got a space of her right here. Invite her in. Sure. So this um, is a tip of the iceberg of editing HTML. Let's take our first break. When we come back, I mean CSS. Let's take a break. When we come back, we'll do a little bit more CSS. Uh, to further um, style this to our own needs.